Ecclesiastes is a, an interesting uh, Old Testament book. It's often ignored. Uh, sometimes it's uh, it people think, well, it's a little hard to understand. It's 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 really just more of of the book of uh, wisdom, the book of Proverbs, but but from a slightly different vantage point, uh, a different teaching perspective. It's like you can teach um, a class on what to do. And then you might teach another class on what not to do. And so it's still you're teaching a similar subject, uh, but from a different vantage point. And so from the vantage point of, of humanity, uh, you know, just humanly speaking, uh, this world is is vanity of the of vanity. All everything is vanity. In other words, it's not going to come to anything, and so it just it is a unique uh, book in that way. And so, uh, but you have uh, very similar thoughts throughout. And tonight, I'm going to be preaching from verses uh, 13 through 18. Uh, and we're going to first read it. We're going to then understand the importance of it, significance of it, and, and interpret it, and then make a couple of applications. And uh, you say, can you make more than one application from a passage of Scripture? Sure you can. Uh, if you, It's an interesting study to, to watch New Testament people quote Old Testament verses and how they applied it in the New Testament context uh, and sometimes having very little to do with its Old Testament um, um, significance or or context, and so and by the way, they did that with the help of the Holy Spirit. So it is a good thing or a, a usable thing. And so I want to make a couple of applications, if I might, uh, when we get there. But notice in beginning in verse number thirteen, the Bible says, "This wisdom have I seen also under the sun." And it seemed great unto me. There was a little city and a few men within it. And there came a great king against it and besieged it and took, excuse me, and built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. And he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. The words of wise, man, of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him uh, heard. Excuse me, more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. And then verse eighteen: Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. I want to speak tonight on the poor wise man. Father, I pray that you would help us tonight as we have opened and read your word, that you would speak to us from the scriptures, draw us to be uh, uh, more like the Lord Jesus Christ, help us to see him in everything we say and in everything we do in a positive light. God, may we uh, exalt him tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The phrase under the sun is one of the key phrases of the book of Ecclesiastes. And so it gives us the perspective, not of heaven, but from the earth. In other words, as we see things. And very often, uh, as man looks at things, there is no hope. As man looks at things, why try? Well, then God gives you the reason for that. But it's interesting in this passage where, where Solomon says, I've observed this under the sun. I've, I've seen this among men. And he uses a parable to speak. And, uh, and some have tried to connect this to events that happened during David's reign and, and uh, etc. But it doesn't say that. It just says, this, this I have seen under the sun. That, that, uh, and, and he gives the lessons drawn from it. And so he says uh, uh, that it seemed like a great lesson to him, verse number 13. And so there was a little city, few men within it. Uh, they, there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. And so here's a, a small city with few men. When it, the Bible says it's a small city, it, it, it basically is, is painting the picture of a 
of a, an insignificant or a weak uh, position with few men in it, meaning there's, there's a lack of leadership. There's a lack of, of uh, significant you know, strength. They, they're not known for military prowess. They, they don't have any, any soldiers uh, that make up the people of this small city. And it gets besieged by a great king we have, having resources and power and great bulwarks are, are, are built against the small city. It seems like uh, a picture is painted here. Uh, if we would look at it simply from uh, materially, uh, you might say, why would a king go to such trouble against the small insignificant city to go up against it to care about it at all it obviously has no it, it seems to have no no military significance it seems to hold no great treasures there's no big king to conquer here and so and, and you would wonder why on earth uh, there would be such of an attention by this great king to go up against this small city and uh, I'll try to answer that for you in just a moment. Uh, there was found in this small city then a poor wise man. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Now, it's interesting, again, that we're not told exactly how he delivered the city. There's an account in Second Samuel about a, a city that was besieged and a woman uh, uh, intervened found out that there was a man uh, there uh, that uh, had offended uh, the, the uh, enemy, the king. And, uh, and, she said, and she intervened and found out that that's all they really wanted was this one man. So she said, okay, uh, you know, uh, just hold on a second and we'll throw you his head over the wall. And, uh, and so she went and got the men of the city and said, look, all these people want is this guy's head because of what he did wrong. So they cut his head off, threw it over the wall, and the guy left. So, uh, and so she intervened and, uh, and saved or delivered that city. And, and so we have other examples uh, that are, I'd say, have similar messages or similar tones uh, to them. But here we're not really told exactly how he delivered the city. We're not told who he is, how he delivered the city, uh, uh, or anything that goes along with that. Uh, and, so, and so it must not be important, by the way. Uh, yet no man remembered that same poor man. So Solomon says, I've seen this uh, under the sun. I've seen this wisdom that there's great danger and there's this poor wise man that with his wisdom causes the city to be spared and gets no recognition for it. They don't, they don't build a statue in his name. They don't put his name over the city gate. They don't have a day, a year in his honor, even though he's, he is responsible for their very lives, for their very existence, and yet they pay him no honor. Now, we would suppose then that what Solomon is going to point out here is that uh, you're wasting your time trying to help people. You know, you help them, they're going to ignore you, they're going to forget you. Why bother? But that's not what he says at all. Notice the wisdom that he found under the sun, and he said, and I think this is great, right? Right? He said that back in, uh, in verse number 13, and it seemed great unto me. Seems important unto me. So what did he say? Let's look at beginning in verse number 16. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. All right? Uh, no matter what happened regarding this poor wise man, wisdom still won the day. Wisdom still prevailed. Is that not the overriding theme of the whole book of Proverbs? Is that, you know, wisdom prevails. And so Solomon says, no matter what happened to this poor man, no matter it, that there was no 
poor wise man day put on the calendar for a big celebration. Everybody take off work, you know, shoot fireworks, and remember this man. Even though that never happened, wisdom is still better than strength because it wins the day. Wisdom is better than strength. And that's what it means when you, if you, if you keep that in perspective, when it says, nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his word are, uh, words are not heard. He's saying, despite the fact that wisdom typically bears no honor, that you can be the wise man that brings about deliverance and still be despised by everyone else. There are, there are um, um, many instances in history where, you know, someone has done something similar to that, where somebody that, you know, is looked down on uh, ends up being the, the one that delivers uh, some people or saves a group of people. And afterwards, their attitude is, yeah, well, yeah, but it's still him. You know, it's still, <laughs> they don't change their attitude about him. But, hey. Wisdom is still better than strength. You, you see, if, if all we're going to do is try to be wise in order to get recognition, we've missed the point. We've missed the point if we're doing it for the praise of men. Wisdom is still better than strength. Uh, number two, look in verse 17. The words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. You see, there's all this noise. There's all of this noise. There's the, we, it, we, the time we live in in the United States of America is a time of clamor. Would you agree with that? It's constant clamor. And I'm not just talking about, you know, you step out the door and, you know, jackhammers are running. Uh, or cars, you know, buses are honking, or, you know, I'm not talking about that kind of thing. I'm talking about the noise of politics and the noise of culture and the noise of society. And it, it is, it is uh, uh, loud. It is, I, I, was, I was in a store today and, and I was just like, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you want to sneak a picture because nobody's going to believe what I just saw. There's no way to describe what I just saw. And I, and I, and I almost did, but I thought, no, no, no I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble if I do that. And so, and so I didn't, but, but it is, it is uh, the, the types of things that are being debated openly and publicly today. I've said, you've probably said, would never happen in our lifetime. I do not understand, and we're going to get in trouble. That's all right. I do not understand how that if you talk to a minor about immoral, immoral things, you're thrown in jail. And yet they can put on parades where children are dressed immorally and exposed to immorality and it's protected. I, 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 I don't know how, I, I don't know how this I, it, it, it makes no sense. It, it's completely irrational. And yet, it seems like no one's batting an eye because you're going to be called, you know, uh, haters and, and et cetera. Uh, listen, we live in a clamorous, clamorous world. You know, it used to be, you knew sin was going on, but it was behind uh, the building in, at night in the alley. And you just could go, you know, normal, good people could just basically live your life and never cross paths with it. You knew it was going on, but it was hidden. It was disguised. It was, it, it was an embarrassment. It was, a, it was a stain on culture. No longer. You, you can't ignore it anymore. You're constantly bombarded with it now. And, uh, and so uh, and you say, well, then, you know, then it's a waste of time. We're, we're wasting it. No, no, no. Wisdom is still better than strength. Still better than strength. 
Uh, the words of wise men are heard and quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. You see, don't, uh, it, he's saying it's still important that wisdom is heard. It's still important that wisdom is heard. And with all of this stuff going back and forth and people totally missing the point, yet there are still a few wise men saying the truth, speaking the truth. You, you, it doesn't make the news. You've got to look for it to find it, but it's still there. And so the first thing is wisdom is more important than strength. The second thing is, there's always wisdom available behind the clamor, behind the noise. Wisdom is still there, still available. And then thirdly, look at verse 18. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. You say, well, see there, one sinner destroyeth much good. All it takes is one person. Yeah, but, but wisdom is still better than weapons of war. In other words, uh, wisdom is the greatest tool that the Christian has to act wisely, to, to be show yourself wise. The wisdom of God, amen, uh, when a Christian has the wisdom of God, uh, you find that you, 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 uh, it makes room for itself. Uh, because when everything else is, is failing, when everything else is falling around you, the world will mock you and make fun of you. But when their life begins to fall apart, quietly, behind the scenes, as came Nicodemus, as, as others came to Jesus, quietly, we know that thou art a ruler, we know that our prophet come from God, and they but they don't want to be seen. They don't want to. It's not in the open. It's not a, a known thing. And so the three lessons that that Solomon puts forward here, he said, "I've seen this wisdom. I've seen this under the sun, and, I, and to me, it's great. And that is, wisdom is more important than strength. Uh, wisdom is always available." Uh, behind the noise of culture, and then wisdom is better. It's more effective than weapons of war. Uh, yes, one sinner destroys much good, but there's still wisdom that will win the day. And then, let me, I, I believe that's the interpretation. I believe that's the, the meaning behind these verses and why they are here. And uh, basically, when God says, okay, when God says uh, uh, through Solomon, I, this is what I've seen. All you need to do is underline the things that he highlights. And that's what I did in my Bible. I don't even know how many years ago on this passage of Scripture. Just, high, just, just underlined, wisdom is better than strength. The w words of the wise men are heard in quiet. And wisdom is better than weapons of war. That's, that's our takeaway. Well, however you look at the rest of it, that's what we're supposed to come away with from this passage. And so now let me make an application concerning this small city without the leadership, without, without men of renown, without, without men that, uh, that uh, might have pull or sway, but yet has a... Has a poor wise man who is the deliverer. And let me make an application to the New Testament church today because the New Testament church today, very often as you see churches today, they are powerless. There's really not much leadership going on. We don't see a, a cry going up from churches today against the sin of our culture against all of the, the foolishness and the nonsense, all of the, the uh, immorality that's going on. You just don't hear men speaking out against it. Uh, our, our local public officials are, are all, all in on everything woke, everything, you know, uh, all of this, this nonsense. It's, it's amazing to me. It, you you want to just, I, there's, there's a sarcastic streak in me a mile long 
that every time you see their inconsistencies, you want to just point it out. Okay? I, I, you, you go someplace, you're filling out, filling out an application. Okay? What is your gender, male or female? I want to walk up and say, what if I'm neither? Aren't you supposed to have 27 categories here? I mean, I have to pick one? Aren't you people woke? I, I can't do that. My wife would hit me in the head. <laughs> and she, she won't let me. <laughs> but, but I, you know, she, she sees things like that going on. She sees me starting to rise my feet. She grabs my arm, just sits me back down. And, okay. But you just, I mean, how many, how many churches are there in the United States of America? You have to believe if everything resembles any kind of a, and I'm not even just talking about dyed in the wool, you know, hard shell Baptist. There's a term you've never heard probably. It's an old term. Well, you, 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 I'm sorry, you probably just never heard it up here. But the old, the down south, man, the, the, uh, the staunch, you know, uh, strict Baptist, they're hard shell Baptists. And, and uh, you just, you just, I'm not just talking about those kinds of churches. I'm just saying anything resembling a, a, a gospel preaching church, it, it just seems like that if all of them raised a voice, that it should carry some authority. It should carry some weight. It, it should at least get some notice. But the church today is relatively silent on immorality and sin. The small church with, excuse me, the small city with, without men, without many men. But the New Testament church still has the poor wise man. You say, who's the poor wise man? The poor wise man is the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the Savior. Amen. He is the one. He was rich. But for our sakes, he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. Amen. And that poor wise man, and he is wisdom. He is wisdom personified. You'll find that in Jesus Christ. He's the living word. He is the wisdom of God. And so we have the Lord Jesus Christ, the poor wise man, who is the savior of a church that, that, that almost ignores him today. There's almost no preaching about Jesus today. There's almost no defending of Jesus today. And when men uh, 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 say, well, you know, you can't be so dogmatic, the church just kind of quietly hushes and says, well, you know, uh, we just, you know, today is things are different. No, 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 no. We still have our Savior, Jesus Christ. But how often it is that that poor wise man, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who single-handedly by his great wisdom is responsible for our salvation and our deliverance. And yet, there are almost no that remember that same poor man. Very little said about Jesus Christ, even in churches today. For all, listen, I, 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 I got weary there for a while. On you know Sunday morning, I'd get in my truck and head into church and. There'd be, it'd be on a radio station, a talk, uh, you know, some some talk station, some some something about news or this or that uh, on on Saturday and Friday and whatever. So I get in, and it's just on 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 Sunday morning, and it'd be a local church service. And by the time I got to the pulpit, I'd be so fired up about all kinds of stuff. I just could, and I had to stop listening to it because they're preaching environmental justice as part of the gospel saying to plant a tree is part of redemption it just it, my head wants to explode and yet he is the poor wise man 
responsible for our salvation. Listen, we, we ought not be among those who ignore our Savior, Jesus Christ, who, who uh, uh, don't remember him. Man, I was getting excited tonight. The songs Brother, Brother John picked out for us to sing, talking about the Savior, and he is mine. Oh, listen, I, knowing what I was about to get up and preach, I was excited about it. But let me say also that the Savior, Jesus Christ, he's the poor, uh, wise man. He's better than strength. Even though his words are often not heard, even in churches today. Even though Christ is often ignored, his wisdom, his wisdom is still heard. And even a church, even a church that is Laodicean, think about this, as I was preparing this message and thinking about it and meditating on it, and a lot of sermon preparation doesn't take place in the study. It takes place while meditating. That, that happens sometimes while driving down the road. And, and uh, as I was meditating on it, I was thinking about the churches of the book of Revelation. I was thinking specifically about a Laodicean church. A church that God says is lukewarm and he'd spew them out of his mouth. A church that is self-righteous. They, they are poor and naked and blind, but they don't know it. They have long since stopped hearing the voice of the poor wise man. But I thought about this. He hasn't stopped speaking to the church of Laodicea. He said that they are immeasurably helped by him. Even though they do a lot to ignore him. Listen, to still have the spirit of God speaking to those New Testament church or those churches in the book of, uh, of Revelation to think about the fact that they were not what they ought to be, to think about uh, they, the fact that they had left their first love, the, to think about the fact that they were careless uh, in their memberships and they were casual in their, uh, in their demeanor and they were uh, not cautious uh, in their service for Christ. So much that he says, I want to just spit you out. And yet he's still talking to them. Oh, listen, the poor wise man, Jesus Christ, is still the best thing they've got going. And then let me say this. Let me make, make a sec second application, if, if you'll allow me a little bit of leeway and we're done. Jesus when he was here, the Bible says that he was the light of the world. Amen? All right. And he said, when he left, he said, now ye are the light of the world. He has left the church to do the job that he started it to do. When he was here, he was the visible, physical head he is yet today the spiritual head of each New Testament church. But he has left us the responsibility of going into all the world and preaching the gospel. He has given us the Holy Spirit of God with his word to go out and preach that Sin is real. Hell is real. There's a Savior who came. His name is Jesus Christ. He's given us that to do. He said he was the light. Now he said, now you are the light. He said, now go into all the world and preach the gospel. And so today, the New Testament church 
in the clamor, the background of the clamor of this world and our culture, still set sometimes with very few wise men. Doesn't mean every church is the same or identical. Doesn't mean we can't have men who are wise and want to hear from God that, uh, you know, the, the group have been here praying Tuesday night for, for revival is encouraging. It's encouraging, uh, not, not a small thing. But I'd say this, that by and large, churches are marked by people on the roles and on the membership uh, list that by and large do not hear the words of the wise man. They don't, they're not concerned about the lost. They're, they have no passion for prayer. Casual about what's going on in the world and just, oh well, it's, it just, that's just the way it is. We live in different times. And if there are still wise men in the church that Jesus Christ has influenced, that we are here in his stead, as it were, amen, there's still a voice of wisdom available, often ignored, maybe not the loudest voice, maybe not enjoyed or appreciated by all, but a church is immeasurably helped when it has men who are these poor wise men who are not desirous of glory or fame, who do not try to have their names mentioned, who do not do what they do, do not serve in order that they might be recognized no, they're just wise men who want to walk with God and who want to have a, have a church that is right with God. And that church is in measure, though they don't know it. There are people on the fringes of a church, Sunday morning possibly, that, that, that never come any other time and maybe don't spend time in prayer and, and they're just casual about, you say, who are they? I, I'm not naming names tonight. I'm not even trying to point in a direction. I'm just saying every church has people who are just on the fringe of the church and do not hear the words of wisdom. They are helped ultimately by wise men still being in the church. Why you say how how can that be? Because wisdom is still better than strength. Because while they might not participate in it, the church is still, still defended. There's an enemy. We wouldn't call him a great king in the sense of our king. But he's the enemy of the saved. And he comes against the New Testament church. Often a small group of people. Without many men, men I don't mean by just saying by gender, I mean wise men. And he seeks to destroy the New Testament church. And those on the fringes might not ever know how much this church is defended by wise men who pray, walk with God, Share Jesus Christ. Open the word of God and study it and teach it to others. Just like the wise man of Ecclesiastes 9 was basically unknown to most of the citizens of that small city. They, they, they may have not even known what he had done. They don't know what he's done for them. There are many who I believe have no idea what goes on when the wise members of a church keep holding it together, 
keep standing for what's right, keep agreeing with what is true, and do as Brother Matt said tonight, to imitate God in holiness, harmlessness, undefiled, separate from sinners. Amen. You say, well, yeah, but they'll never know. Okay. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I don't know. I just know this. No matter whether they do or not, Solomon said, wisdom is still better than strength. The voice of wisdom is always still available, though sometimes outshouted. And wisdom is more effective than the weapons of war. One sinner, yes, can destroy much good. But one wise man can spare the city. It doesn't take, you say, well, if everybody got on board, well, that would be the first time it's probably ever happened in church history. You say, well, no, Jesus started church. Yeah, it was Judas. If everybody got on board, yeah, well, if you're holding your breath for that to happen, yeah, it would be great. But it doesn't have to be that to make an impact. One poor wise man. Father, I pray tonight that you would help us. And while our text takes us to imagine a man in gender. The application is really for anyone. For ladies as well as men. That just one poor wise man can spare a city. as Abram bargained with the Lord over the city of Sodom. It doesn't take much, but it takes some. God, I pray tonight that there'll be more than one here tonight that would say, God, with your help, I want to be a poor wise man. I want to stand for what's right. I want to be true and faithful. I want to be holy and just. I want to be that voice that follows Christ with my life. And with God's help, join one voice to another and those to two more. And with the help and blessing of God, it doesn't have to be the small, insignificant sound anymore. But it can be the majority. But only if each one says, I want to be one. One small voice, one poor wise man. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed as we stand to our feet, the piano begins to.